Okay, good morning everybody. Thank you for coming for the even for short notice. Today, Kai uh, is uh, my student visiting a scholar from Rome, where I hold uh, like an adjunct um, position. So often I have students visiting from Rome and trying to do the master research program with us. Uh, Karim uh, is um, in his last year of his master program in exploration geology and uh, uh, he came uh, here to a program, um, scholarship supported by uh, the uh, regional municip municipality of Rome. Uh, over uh, 600 people, uh, uh, Karim qualified six, so it's a pretty good uh, result for us. And uh, he has been here for six months and uh, studied basically uh, his thesis in ocean exploration and marine geology. Uh, in ocean exploration, uh, uh, acoustics is the basic tools. And uh, so Karim is going to show you guys some kind of application of uh, multi-beam echo sounder and chip support. The thesis is mostly on uh, geologists because Kai is, in a, is doing his master in geology and exploration. Uh, we hope that uh, we find this something interesting. Okay. Thank Thanks, Rio. Uh, in today's work, uh, we won't talk about uh, how it was possible to uh, characterize the seabed and the first 70 meters uh, of sediment below it in the Gulf of Mexico and the erosional processes uh, with the use of bathymetric and high resolution seismic data. So we can see the main topics in the presentation, we talk about the data donation and the flow, the water of the field, and uh, I talked about the thunder of field in my area, and the, uh, what is the AUV uh, after the experimental method. The data that we have available to come from DP and other partners because of donation for scientific and purpose and educational purposes. <coughs> and the data concerns four oil fields, the uh, earth field, heavy water field, and the roads, Atlantis, Allstate, and the Oil. The oil company collected this data because one of the uh, requirements before the installation of any infrastructure should have information on geohazard. The data were collected for, the, uh, for this type of purpose. A geohazard is a um, geological state that uh, may lead to widespread damage or risk. And uh, the geohazard is doing uh, shallow gas, abnormal pressure zone, fall, slow slope instability, and uh, very dangerous the blowout, the dangerous the blowout, water, and the blowout. Um, this is the, the area that uh, we have available, so Holstein, McDonald, Atlantis, and Pandoros. And we have chosen the Pandoros uh, <coughs> oil field. The survey area is located in the north central Gulf of Mexico, uh, the sign as the city canyon area. And the study and the study area is located on the lower show, uh, lower continental slope offshore of uh, Louisiana, at the base of the Mississippi Farm, uh, near the margin of the six feet brain. And this one is a uh, uh, scar, the uh, six feet scar. Uh, if uh, we look closer, we can see that the area of investigation is located inside, uh, within the Mississippi Canyon Block. This is my area. The survey area is an irregular polygon covering 19 square miles. And the area is located within uh, 18 blocks. And the validity of the seabed has range of value uh, of. Uh, 1,600 uh, 1, uh, 
meters to uh, 2,000 meters below the sea level. The AUV acquires simultaneously multi-beam acoustic data, that's scatter data, and uh, support from profile acoustic data. But the question is, uh, who is a AUV, AUV and who is made? An autonomous underwater vehicle, or a drone of AUV, uh, is a submarine which travels underwater very, very good. This is bad, and uh, this is the point very important, without requiring uh, input from an operator. So, the other question is why they use the AUV to acquire acoustic data? The research area is located at uh, 2,000 meters depth, mm, and the oil company uh, industries need high resolution data, <coughs> acoustic data of this of seabed, and uh, often uh, to acquire uh, acoustic uh, data of bathymetry using uh, vessel. Unfortunately, with this system, there is a loss of high frequencies. This thing is caused by an absorption of them into the water column. We want to remember that uh, we find 2,000 meters below of sea level. And for this reason, it has been installed on IKUB, a multi-beam solar, uh, multi solar level, uh, to see clearly the seabed. With this acquisition system, was possible to observe uh, the seabed with uh, high resolution. And uh, now uh, let's see some examples. This is this image uh, of the seabed in the Gulf of Mexico from NOAA database. And we can see uh, the resolution of the seabed is low and very bad. And we can recognize, uh, recognize uh, the details. Okay. This is the same image, image uh, taken from hand, a new generation of uh, multi beam on vessel. And we uh, can observe with greater detail the eye and the structures uh, that uh, can see before. You know, the structure that before you can see. Uh, can see. This is the same image taken from a multi-beam uh, uh, of AUV. We can see a bunch of details uh, of the area and observe the small tectonic structure such as this one that before uh, uh, they can see before. This is the big kind. And this is very great resolution for make a great analysis of the seabed. We use the bathymetry from multi-beam to create a digital elevation model, uh, terrain model and display it in different fashion. Uh, shadow relief map, relief map, control map and trendy surface. We use the best scatter to characterize the reflectivity of the sediment and finally, we use the chirp uh, to study the subsurface. In the area, uh, in, uh, the, the area uh, there are different geological approaches. We can see that there are two major approaches. There is the salt tectonic, which creates this high and low morphology in this area. For example, in this area, uh, we can see <laughs> there's dome structures. There is also the Mississippi River that supplies the marine system of the Gulf of Mexico, a great silicoplastic input. This is a deep seismic line donated uh, by the Bureau of Ocean uh, Energy Management. And, this seismic line are used by oil company to find out uh, if there is a petroleum system. What we can see in this line, uh, 
that the salt, the form, this is the salt, and we saw the form, the sediment at the, uh, the sediment at the top of the We can see that this group, this, this group, was crowded by salt tectonics. For the reason it was useful to observe the deep seismic line to understand what uh, was being the geological process that generated the morphology. Uh, the thickness uh, um, of, the, of this single plastic sediment, mostly uh, clay and silt, is about 1000 meters. So, uh, if you look at this area with only the data of the seismic, it may seem that the sediment near the uh, sea floor are not this true. But if we see the chief data uh, of the surface, we observe that the situation is not simple. Let's see with just the deep seismic line. So we try to do was to analyze the morphology of the uh, uh, thunder horse uh, using the multi beamers data and we try try to derive the type and the characteristics of sediment on the seabed through the reflectivity of the sea floor. And finally uh, we have tried to characterize the subsurface through the construction of 3D models and through the analysis of seismic flashes. And so uh, we this is the uh, the analysis. And this is the this is a shadow relief map which represents the seabed and the point of view is on zenith. So we can see the particular areas where the seabed is corrugated. This part, this part. And this area was called amokic uh, surface. We will see also, see, uh, we see also see, uh, different types of uh, amokic array. And we observe an area where there are morphological features and undisturbed area. This is the same representation that we uh, have seen before, but from another point of view, and this one is a 3D representation of the seabed. We can clearly <coughs> see that the presence of the slope and the amobis floor. And uh, this 3D shows the presence of the morphological figures at the uh, at the morphological figures at the base of the slope. Same story for this map, but uh, with different lighting and uh, different angle. And this is the gradient map. With this one, uh, we can see how the gradient are at center. The slope. <coughs> Uh, we can see the difference uh, between the amobi sea floor and the smooth sea floor, mm -hmm. where there isn't the gradient or is uh, big. To help bathymetric anal analysis, uh, uh, we made some uh, topographical profile with global uh, mapper program. We mainly observe that the area where there are the amobi. We have seen that there is a difference in the type of the amogi. In the first two images, we can see that the amogi are fragment and that follow one from the other, while for the last image, we can see how the amogi are almost smooth. Here, we can see that the area of investigation is subject to uh, the surface break. The, this, this break are of tectonic features developed in the plastic sediment. This is 
then you add a uh, 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 intercalate of syrup and clay, so it's very soft. We have created a morphomagnetic uh, map uh, to observe the main morphological form that characterizes the eye. Uh, we have seen that there are areas where there are depression. These depression are popmars and popmars result for, uh, from the widespread expulsion of fluid or gas into the water column. In the area we can see all groups. Uh, these all group, groups are composed of autogenic carbonates and uh, this image is not very clear but uh, this is the all groups in this area. These are our surface photos where we can observe the full plane in some cases. These are normal photos that create the high and low structure. Um, after analysis of this map, of this map we have uh, the idea of creating a chart that represents the main morphological domains. There are six main domains. There is the smooth sea floor at the base of the slope, the smooth and amoby sea floor. The amoby sea floor, we have seen that there are different types of fungi. The wrinkles sea floor, where there are the folds, and the slope, and the mixes where there are popmars, opros, and food. Through the analysis of intensity of backscatter, we try to reconstruct the type and the size of sediment of the sea bed. Um, high backscatter value suggests us that the sediment is coarse, while low backscatter value suggests us that the segment is a medium fine size. Um, we can see on the slope, <coughs> um, we have a segment with a medium value of backscatter. And uh, we can also observe that within popmars in this area, outgroups and at the base of the um, slope, we have high value of backscatter. And this is a uh, error in the Dosh scene. This is not true. No, that's value. Um, for the surface analysis, uh, uh, we have created, uh, created a project where the seismic line were displayed over the bathymetry map. For the interpretation, we use the picking method. This method consists in following the uh, main horizons and map them. We identify I hate uh, seismic unit, unit which present uh, different seismic patches. Each unit is separated by high amplitude reflection <coughs> reflector, and uh, uh, we can see how the unit one and two don't show reflection and continuous reflection as the units 2 and 4 that there are the high reflect high amplitude reflection and continuous and the unit 5 is characterized of the watering process we talk about after and we can see that unit 6 and uh, unit uh, A um, are it's very different from the other units. So these units are uh, transparent, chaotic, and without amplitude. We have interpreted <coughs> them uh, as debris flow. For this reason, we try to mark at the top 
uh, of this debris flow and we uh, recognize two debris flow. In this image we can see well then. So uh, after the picking uh, we tried uh, to create surface in 3D of this uh, debris flow. We can see how this debris flow uh, surface become close to pinch out again the red line. We have seen that in the deep light, uh, in the deep seismic line there is the salt in this area. We observe a geological process over the debris flow and uh, <coughs> this is the dewatering process. This process of course when above the debris flow uh, reached in water, there is the addition of allotostatic pressures. Thus the fluid tends to move toward lower uh, pressure gradient and the movement occur upward for this reason. The consequence of uh, uh, this process is that the layer affected by the watering are semi-transparent uh, on the line forming a clear halo. And here we can observe this process better. Let's observe the various morphological form with the hide of the deep seismic line. We can see how this acoustic void on seismic line hide the reflection. This void the result of from the right spread expulsion fluid or gas into the sediment. These are the hot groups, the hot group exhibit I, uh, acoustic reflectivity uh, uh, accompanied by attenuation of the support on profile signal below the hot groups. Here we can see how the sur surface layers are cut by normal fault interpretation and uh, to conclude we can say that thanks to acoustic data but imagine and surface has been possible to define the uh, activity of the salt. We think that the salt is active uh, because we can see the tectonic deformation on the resin sediment uh, below the seabed. Uh, the salt is a topographic high because it creates a limit for the deep flow, as we have seen in 3D surface. This is another reason to say that the salt was present before the debris flow. The presence of pop marks, gas, pockets, along them, all groups and more, tell us that uh, there is a oil trap that lost fluid or gas near the tunnel of the field. We didn't observe particular erosional processes in, in our survey area, and for the future studies, we plan to focus on expand, expanding the area of the water because this process weakens the sediment above the debris flow. <coughs> this process makes the uh, unstable seabed and this is one uh, of the problem of Geoaza for secure installation of pipe or other similar infrastructure. So, uh, I would like to thank the CPA for hosting, but also for giving me 